The rain pounded against the windshield, each drop a deafening thud in the silence of the car. Sarah's knuckles were white as she gripped the steering wheel, eyes darting between the slick, winding road and the gas gauge that had been blinking empty for the last 15 minutes. Her heart raced. The deep, enveloping darkness seemed to stretch on forever, swallowing the road, the trees, everything around her. She cursed herself for taking this route. It had been years since she'd driven through these back roads. After her husband, David, disappeared on a similar drive two years ago, she swore she'd never come this way again. But here she was, lost in the storm, with no phone signal and barely enough fuel to make it to the next town. Her breath quickened as memories of David's unsolved case flashed through her mind. The car sputtered. The needle on the gas gauge dipped further. Panic surged. And then she saw it. A dim light flickering through the rain. A gas station. Sarah exhaled a shaky breath and turned off the road toward the small, rundown station. It seemed out of place, the only sign of life in this forsaken stretch of highway. The neon sign flickered, open 24-7. Pulling up to the pump, she sat for a moment, the engine idling as the rain drummed against the roof. The station was old, the kind that looked like it hadn't seen a customer in years. Rusty, weathered signs advertised gas prices from decades ago. An uneasy feeling settled in her stomach, but she had no choice. She had to refuel. She stepped out of the car, pulling her jacket tight against the cold rain and began to pump the gas. The station was eerily quiet. No cars, no attendant, just the rain and the low hum of the neon sign. As she filled the tank, Sarah glanced toward the station's small office. The windows were covered in grime, but she could make out faint movement inside, a shadow passing by. Her heart thudded. Was someone watching her? The pump clicked, signaling the tank was full. Relieved, Sarah replaced the nozzle and quickly got back into the car. As she reached for the ignition, her eyes were drawn to the office again. This time, the door creaked open and a figure stepped out. A tall man, wearing a dirty cap and an old oil-stained jacket, stood under the flickering light. His face was obscured by shadows, but Sarah could feel his eyes on her. He raised a hand, waving slowly, almost mechanically. Her pulse quickened. She forced a smile and gave a quick nod in return, starting the engine. It sputtered to life, and she pulled out of the station, watching the man in her rearview mirror until he disappeared into the rain. As she drove, the unease began to fade. She told herself she was just being paranoid. The storm, the isolation, the memories of David. It was all playing tricks on her mind. Then she noticed something. A noise. A faint, rhythmic thudding from the back of the car. Thud, thud, thud. Her grip tightened on the wheel. At first, she thought it might be the road. Maybe she'd hit a pothole or something, but the noise didn't stop. It grew louder, more insistent. Thud, thud, thud. Sarah's heart pounded in her chest. She glanced in the rearview mirror and sighed, but the rain-smeared glass made it hard to see anything clearly. What was that sound? She slowed the car, pulling over to the side of the road. The noise continued. Thud, thud, thud echoing through the stillness. Taking a deep breath, she stepped out into the rain, her flashlight in hand. The sound was coming from the trunk. Dread coiled in her stomach, tightening with each step. She reached the back of the car, her hand trembling as she unlocked the trunk. Slowly, she lifted the lid. Inside was nothing but darkness, until she shined the light inside. Her breath caught in her throat. There, wedged between her suitcase and the spare tire, was a small, blood-stained hammer. Her mind raced. She didn't own a hammer like that. How had it gotten there? And then it hit her. The man. The gas station. In a panic, she slammed the trunk shut and rushed back into the car. Her hands shook as she fumbled for her keys. She had to get out of here. Fast. But as soon as she turned the key in the ignition, a loud banging came from behind the car. She froze, heart hammering in her chest. There in the rearview mirror, she saw him. The man from the gas station, standing in the rain, his face now illuminated by her taillights. He was holding something in his hand. The hammer. Sarah's scream caught in her throat as he raised it high and brought it crashing down on the back window. Glass shattered, raining over her as she slammed the car into gear and sped off down the road, tires screeching against the wet pavement. The rain poured harder. Her vision blurred with tears, panic overtaking her. She drove blindly through the storm, not daring to look back. She could still hear the thudding echoing in her mind. It wasn't until she reached the next town, 
her body shaking with adrenaline that she dared to stop. She pulled into a brightly lit diner parking lot, gasping for breath. Safe. She was safe. But as she sat there staring at the rain-streaked windshield, something caught her eye. A folded piece of paper wedged under the windshield wiper. With trembling hands, she stepped out of the car, grabbed the note, and unfolded it. In crude, smeared writing, it read, You never did find David, did you? Sarah's blood turned to ice. The hammer wasn't the only thing in the trunk. She never checked the suitcase. Story number two. The sign for Jack's 24-hour gas flickered in the, dis in the distance, barely visible through the dense fog that swallowed the deserted highway. The moon was a sliver, offering little light, and the only sound was the occasional gust of wind rustling the trees. Sarah gripped the steering wheel tightly, her knuckles white. The gas needle dipped dangerously close to empty. She hadn't seen another car in over an hour, and her cell phone had died a long time ago. The thought of being stranded out here, alone in the middle of nowhere, chilled her more than the creeping cold of the autumn night. As she pulled off the highway and into the gas station lot, her headlights caught the outline of the small rundown building. The flickering sign buzzed faintly, and the pumps looked like they hadn't been serviced in years. Sarah glanced at the station's interior through her windshield. The lights were on, but the place looked empty. She hesitated for a moment, but then the car sputtered, out of fuel. She had no choice. Stepping out of the car, she felt the weight of the silence around her. The station sat isolated, surrounded by trees that loomed in every direction. A chill ran down her spine as her footsteps echoed in the empty lot. The air felt wrong, heavy, like something was watching her. She tried to shake off the feeling and approach the pump. She fumbled with her credit card, but the machine rejected it. No response. The screen stayed blank. She cursed under her breath and looked toward the gas station's door. A bell jingled when she pushed it open, though no one was behind the counter. Hello? She called out, her voice trembling slightly. Is anyone here? Silence. She walked further inside, her footsteps muffled on the old, dirty tile. There were shelves stocked with snacks and drinks, but the place felt... abandoned. The faint smell of stale coffee hung in the air. As she moved toward the counter, she noticed something off. A set of keys lay on the counter next to a wallet, but there was no sign of anyone around. She rang the bell. Once. Twice. Nothing. She should leave, she thought. There had to be another station up the road. But as she turned to go, the sound of faint tapping echoed from behind the door that led to the back room. Tap. 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 Sarah froze, her heart hammering in her chest. Was it the wind? The pipes? Tap. Tap. No, it was deliberate, rhythmic. Someone or something was back there. Slowly, against her better judgment, Sarah approached the door. She could feel the cold air seeping from the crack beneath it. The tapping continued, more insistent now, like a soft knock urging her forward. She reached for the door handle, her fingers trembling. With a slow, deliberate motion, she twisted it and pushed the door open just enough to peek inside. It was dark, save for a single dim bulb swinging from the ceiling. The room smelled damp, and the air was thick. Something metallic caught her eye, a drain in the center of the concrete floor. Surrounding it were dark stains, smeared in patterns too chaotic to be oil or dirt. Then she saw him. A man stood in the corner, his back turned to her, his head twitching slightly. He was tall, unnaturally thin, and his clothes were soaked with something dark. Tap, tap, tap. His fingers drummed softly against the wall in an odd rhythm. Excuse me. Sarah managed to whisper, her throat dry. I, I need some help with the pump. The man stopped tapping. He didn't turn around, didn't move. For a moment, there was nothing but silence, the kind that stretches so long you forget to breathe. Then he let out a low, gurgling noise, like a laugh trying to escape from deep within his chest. Sarah took a step back, her body screaming for her to run, but her legs felt rooted to the floor. Suddenly, the man jerked forward his movements unnatural, as if his limbs were being pulled by invisible strings. He turned to face her, and Sarah's stomach dropped. His eyes were wide, bloodshot, and his mouth was twisted into a grotesque smile, his teeth bared and cracked. His skin looked paper-thin, almost translucent in the dim light. He reached out a hand, stained with what looked like dark streaks of blood, and pointed toward the door. Get out, he whispered, the words barely more than a rasp. Without hesitation, Sarah spun on her heel and bolted out of the back room, her heart pounding in her ears. 
She slammed the door behind her and raced out of the station, not daring to look back. As she reached her car, she fumbled with her keys, her hands shaking so violently she dropped them twice before finally unlocking the door. She jumped into the driver's seat and turned the key. Nothing. The engine sputtered, but the car wouldn't start. No, 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 she cried, slamming her fist against the dashboard. Suddenly, a flicker of movement caught her eye in the rearview mirror. Behind her, just a few feet from the car, stood another figure. This one different. A woman, drenched from head to toe in what looked like gasoline. Her eyes were hollow, sunken into her face. She tilted her head slightly, and Sarah felt the weight of her gaze. The woman raised a match. Sarah's breath caught in her throat. Uh, she scrambled for the door handle, but it wouldn't budge. The woman struck the match, the flame flickering in the darkness, her hollow eyes locked onto Sarah's. Just as the flame dropped from the woman's hand, the gas station lights flickered once, twice, and then everything went black. Story number three. The rain pounded against the windshield as Ethan pulled into the gas station, the tires splashing through the puddles on the cracked asphalt. The storm had come out of nowhere, swallowing the sky in an instant. His GPS had died along with his phone battery, and his car's fuel gauge was now blinking furiously, warning him that the tank was nearly empty. The road ahead was dark, and the only light came from the faint flickering sign above the gas station. Gill's last stop, open 24-7. It didn't look like the kind of place you'd want to linger, especially on a night like this. The neon lights buzzed faintly as they struggled to stay lit, and the windows of the station were grimy, as though they hadn't been cleaned in years. There were no other cars in the lot, just the echo of rain and the soft rumble of thunder in the distance. Ethan sighed and stepped out of the car, shivering as the cold rain soaked through his jacket. He fumbled for his wallet and made his way toward the pump, only to find a sign taped to it pay inside. Of course. He glanced toward the station again, but the windows were dark. There was a faint glow inside, though it looked deserted. Ethan felt a pit forming in his stomach, but told himself it was just the storm, the isolation making him jumpy. He had no choice but to go inside if he wanted gas. As he approached the door, he noticed something odd, a payphone mounted on the side of the building, its receiver hanging loosely from the cord, swaying gently in the wind. Ethan hesitated, his eyes narrowing. Who even used payphones anymore? It seemed out of place. Brushing off the unease, he pushed the door open, the old bell above it jangling loudly. Inside, the gas station was as run down as it looked from the outside. The flickering fluorescent lights hummed loudly, casting eerie shadows over the shelves filled with dusty, expired snacks. Hello? Ethan called, his voice echoing in the empty space. There was no response. He approached the counter, noticing an old cash register that looked like it hadn't been used in years. But then, just as he was about to turn and leave, a figure stepped out from the back. The man was tall and thin, his face gaunt and pale, with dark circles under his eyes. His uniform was tattered, the name tag so worn that the name was no longer legible. He smiled, though it didn't reach his eyes. Help you? The man asked in a voice so low it was almost a whisper. Yeah, I uh, need to fill up. Ethan replied, trying to hide his unease. He handed over his credit card, and the man swiped it through an ancient card reader. As the machine processed the payment, Ethan glanced around. There were old newspapers stacked in a corner, yellowed with age, their headlines blurred by time. But something caught his eye, a headline that was still somewhat readable. Local family found dead near Gill's last stop, no suspects. Ethan blinked. The date was from 20 years ago, but the idea of something like that happening so close sent a shiver down his spine. Here you go, the man said, sliding the card back toward him. Pump's ready. Thanks, Ethan muttered, eager to get out of the place. As he turned to leave, the man's voice stopped him. Storm's bad tonight. Roads can be tricky. His eyes locked onto Ethan's. Be careful. Ethan nodded quickly and hurried back to his car. The rain had picked up again pouring in sheets as he filled the tank. His fingers fumbled with the pump, and he couldn't shake the feeling that he was being watched. He glanced back toward the gas station window. The man was still there, standing behind the counter, watching him. His face was expressionless. Ethan finished pumping the gas and practically jumped into his car, slamming the door shut. He started the engine and pulled out of the station, breathing a sigh of relief as he merged back onto the highway. The rain was so heavy now that he could barely see the road, but he pushed on, 
eager to put distance between him and that place. As the station disappeared in his rearview mirror, the unease that had been gnawing at him only grew stronger. Something wasn't right. He couldn't shake the image of that man's lifeless eyes, the strange payphone, the old newspaper. Then his headlights caught something ahead, something standing in the middle of the road. Ethan slammed on the brakes, his heart pounding in his chest. The car skidded to a stop just inches from the figure. His breath caught in his throat as he saw who it was. The man from the gas station, soaked, but standing there, his eyes wide and staring straight at Ethan. Ethan blinked, his hands trembling on the wheel. How could he be here? He hadn't passed him. The road was straight, and the man was smiling now, a slow, eerie grin that spread across his face. Suddenly, the car's radio crackled to life, static at first, then a voice, faint, distorted, but unmistakable. Turn back. Ethan's blood ran cold. He looked up, but the man was gone. The road was empty again, the rain pounding against the car. He hit the gas, speeding down the road, his heart racing, but then the lights began to flicker. The dashboard went dark, and the engine sputtered before dying completely. The car coasted to a stop in the middle of the highway. No, 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 Ethan muttered, frantically trying to restart the car, but it was dead. Then he heard it. A tap. Faint, but unmistakable. Tap. 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 Ethan turned, his eyes widening as he saw the man again, standing just outside his window, smiling that same awful smile. But this time there was something else. Others. Figures, shadowy and indistinct, surrounding the car, their eyes glowing faintly in the dark. And then the tapping grew louder. Tap. 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 The glass began to crack. Story number four. The gas station appeared out of nowhere, a lone beacon of light in the pitch black void of the highway. Jake's headlights flickered as they illuminated the rundown structure. It was the kind of place you'd miss if you blinked, tucked just off a back road no one ever seemed to drive on. But his fuel gauge had been on empty for the last 20 minutes, and the nearest town was still miles away. He had no choice. He pulled into the station, the engine sputtering as he parked next to a pump. The building looked ancient, like it hadn't been touched in decades. A crooked sign, barely readable, hung from the roof. Last stop gas and service. The paint was peeling, and the windows were caked with grime, giving it a lifeless, abandoned feel. Jake glanced around. No other cars, no lights inside, but the pump looked functional. He stepped out of the car, the air thick with the smell of wet asphalt and gasoline. As he reached for the pump handle, a bell jingled from inside the station. Someone was there. The door to the station creaked open, and a figure stepped out. A woman. She was tall, her dark hair matted with grease, and she wore an old stained uniform with a name tag that read Nina. Her face was pale, almost sickly, and her eyes were glassy, as if she hadn't slept in days. Need some help? She asked, her voice flat, devoid of emotion. Jake hesitated. There was something off about her, but he needed gas. Yeah, just filling up, he replied, forcing a polite smile. Do you take cards? Nina stared at him for a long moment before nodding slowly. Inside, pay when you're done. She didn't move, just stood there, watching him as he began to pump the gas. The whole time, her eyes never left him. Unease prickled at the back of his neck. He tried to shake it off, focusing on the rhythmic click of the pump as it slowly filled his tank. After what felt like an eternity, the pump clicked off. Jake replaced the nozzle and headed toward the station. The door creaked as he pushed it open, the sound echoing in the silent night. Inside, the station was even worse than he expected. The shelves were mostly bare, save for a few dusty cans of motor oil and expired snacks. The lights flickered overhead, casting long shadows that seemed to shift and writhe in the corners of the room. Nina stood behind the counter, staring at him with that same unsettling blank expression. Jake handed her his card, and she swiped it slowly, her movements almost robotic. The receipt printer groaned, and she handed him the slip without a word. Thanks, he muttered, turning to leave. You should be careful, she said suddenly, her voice softer now, almost a whisper. Jake froze, hand on the door. What do you mean? Nina's glassy eyes met his, and for the first time there was a flicker of something. Fear. Strange things happen on this road, she said. People disappear. A chill ran down Jake's spine. He didn't want to stay and find out what she meant. I'll keep that in mind, he said, pushing the door open and stepping back into the night. He climbed into his car, his heart racing. The engine roared to life, and he pulled out of the station, his tires squealing against the wet pavement. 
As he sped down the highway, he glanced in the rearview mirror. Nina was standing in the doorway, watching him drive away. Her figure grew smaller and smaller until it disappeared into the night. The road stretched on for miles, the darkness pressing in from all sides. Jake's grip tightened on the steering wheel. Something about Nina's warning gnawed at him. Disappearances? On this road? He told himself she was just trying to spook him. Maybe she was lonely or just plain crazy. Either way, he was glad to be far away from that creepy station. Then his headlights flickered. The engine stuttered and the car jerked violently before the dashboard lights blinked out, plunging him into darkness. Jake cursed under his breath, guiding the car to the side of the road as it coasted to a stop. He tried the ignition, but the car was dead. No lights, no sound, just silence. His heart pounded in his chest. He grabbed his phone, but there was no signal. Of course there wasn't. The road was empty, not a single car in sight, and the dark woods pressed in on both sides. He stepped out of the car, the cold night air biting at his skin. He popped the hood, hoping it was something simple, maybe a loose cable, something he could fix quickly and be on his way. But as he leaned over the engine, the sound of footsteps crunched on the gravel behind him. He froze, his breath catching in his throat. Slowly, he turned around. Nina was standing there, just a few feet away, her pale face illuminated by the moonlight. She wasn't supposed to be here. She hadn't followed him, had she? Your car won't start, she said, her voice low, almost a growl. Jake took a step back. How did you? You shouldn't have stopped, she interrupted, taking a step closer. I told you, people disappear. Jake's pulse raced as he stumbled back toward his car. What the hell do you want, he demanded, his voice shaking. Nina smiled, a cold, lifeless grin. It's not me you should worry about. Before Jake could respond, a hand clamped down on his shoulder from behind. His heart leaped into his throat as he spun around, only to find himself face to face with nothing, just empty air. But he could feel it, a presence, something lurking just beyond the shadows. Then the whisper came, soft and breathless, right by his ear. You're the next. Jake's vision blurred as a sudden icy chill gripped his body. He turned back to Nina, but she was gone. The gas station, the car, everything disappeared, swallowed by the dark woods, and the footsteps, they were getting closer. Story number five. The rain pounded against the windshield, each drop a deafening thud in the silence of the car. Sarah's knuckles were white as she gripped the steering wheel, eyes darting between the slick, winding road and the gas gauge that had been blinking empty for the last 15 minutes. Her heart raced. The deep, enveloping darkness seemed to stretch on forever, swallowing the road, the trees, everything around her. She cursed herself for taking this route. It had been years since she'd driven through these back roads. After her husband David disappeared on a similar drive two years ago, she swore she'd never come this way again. But here she was, lost in the storm, with no phone signal and barely enough fuel to make it to the next town. Her breath quickened as memories of David's unsolved case flashed through her mind. The car sputtered. The needle on the gas gauge dipped further. Panic surged. And then she saw it. A dim light flickering through the rain. A gas station. Sarah exhaled a shaky breath and turned off the road toward the small, rundown station. It seemed out of place, the only sign of life in this forsaken stretch of highway. The neon sign flickered, open 24-7. Pulling up to the pump, she sat for a moment, the engine idling as the rain drummed against the roof. The station was old, the kind that looked like it hadn't seen a customer in years. Rusty, weathered signs advertised gas prices from decades ago. An uneasy feeling settled in her stomach, but she had no choice. She had to refuel. She stepped out of the car, pulling her jacket tight against the cold rain, and began to pump the gas. The station was eerily quiet, no cars, no attendant just the rain and the low hum of the neon sign. As she filled the tank, Sarah glanced toward the station's small office. The windows were covered in grime, but she could make out faint movement inside, a shadow passing by. Her heart thudded. Was someone watching her? The pump clicked, signaling the tank was full. Relieved, Sarah replaced the nozzle and quickly got back into the car. As she reached for the ignition, her eyes were drawn to the office again. This time, the door creaked open and a figure stepped out. A tall man, wearing a dirty cap and an old, oil-stained jacket, stood under the flickering light. His face was obscured by shadows, but Sarah could feel his eyes on her. He raised a hand, waving slowly, almost mechanically. 
Her pulse quickened. She forced a smile and gave a quick nod in return, starting the engine. It sputtered to life, and she pulled out of the station, watching the man in her rearview mirror until he disappeared into the rain. As she drove, the unease began to fade. She told herself she was just being paranoid. The storm, the isolation, the memories of David, it was all playing tricks on her mind. Then she noticed something, a noise, a faint rhythmic thudding from the back of the car. Thud, thud, thud. Her grip tightened on the wheel. At first, she thought it might be the road. Maybe she'd hit a pothole or something, but the noise didn't stop. It grew louder, more insistent. Thud, thud, thud. Sarah's heart pounded in her chest. She glanced in the rearview mirror, but the rain-smeared glass made it hard to see anything clearly. What was that sound? She slowed the car, pulling over to the side of the road. The noise continued. Thud, 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 echoing through the stillness. Taking a deep breath, she stepped out into the rain, her flashlight in hand. The sound was come from the trunk. Dread coiled in her stomach, tightening with each step. She reached the back of the car, her hand trembling as she unlocked the trunk. Slowly, she lifted the lid. Inside was nothing but darkness until she shined the light inside. Her breath caught in her throat. There, wedged between her suitcase and the spare tire, was a small blood-stained hammer. Her mind raced. She didn't own a hammer like that. How had it gotten there? And then it hit her. The man. The gas station. In a panic, she slammed the trunk shut and rushed back into the car. Her hands shook as she fumbled for her keys. She had to get out of here. Fast. But as soon as she turned the key in the ignition, a loud banging came from behind the car. She froze, heart hammering in her chest. There, in the rearview mirror, she saw him. The man from the gas station, standing in the rain, his, his face now illuminated by her taillights. He was holding something in his hand. The hammer. Sarah's scream caught in her throat as he raised it high and brought it crashing down on the back window. Glass shattered, raining over her as she slammed the car into gear and sped off down the road, tires screeching against the wet pavement. The rain poured harder. Her vision blurred with tears, panic overtaking her. She drove blindly through the storm, not daring to look back. She could still hear the thudding echoing in her mind. It wasn't until she reached the next town, her body shaking with adrenaline, that she dared to stop. She pulled into a brightly lit diner parking lot, gasping for breath. Safe. She was safe. But as she sat there, staring at the rain-streaked windshield, something caught her eye. A folded piece of paper wedged under the windshield wiper. With trembling hands, she stepped out of the car, grabbed the note, and unfolded it. In crude, smeared writing, it read, You never did find David, did you? Sarah's blood turned to ice. The hammer wasn't the only thing in the trunk. She never checked the suitcase. Story number six. The rain had been relentless for hours as Kyle drove down the isolated highway, his knuckles white as he gripped the steering wheel. His wipers struggled to clear the heavy downpour, and the road ahead seemed to stretch endlessly into the dark. He checked the dashboard. The gas gauge was dipping dangerously close to empty. Come on, just a little farther, he muttered to himself, scanning the roadside for any sign of life. That's when he saw it. A flickering neon sign up ahead, barely visible through the sheets of rain. Riley's Gas and Diner. Kyle let out a sigh of relief and pulled off the highway, coasting into the lot. The gas station was small, almost forgotten, like something from another era. The pumps looked ancient, their paint peeling, and the diner attached to the side had the kind of dim lighting that made it look closed, despite the neon open sign in the window. He parked next to the first pump and stepped out into the rain, quickly pulling his hood over his head. He tried swiping his card at the pump, but the screen flashed an error. Pay inside. Of course. Kyle jogged across the lot toward the diner, his boots splashing through puddles. When he reached the door, he hesitated. Through the glass, he could see a single customer sitting in a booth, head down, motionless. Behind the counter, an old woman, her hair pinned back in a tight bun, that stood staring blankly at the cash register. The bell above the door jingled as he entered. The warmth inside hit him immediately, but there was something off. The diner had the strong smell of old grease, and the silence inside was almost deafening. The only sound was the hum of the lights and the occasional clink of the rain hitting the windows. Evening, Kyle said, trying to sound casual as he approached the counter. Just need to pay for some gas. The old woman's eyes slowly drifted toward him, her face expressionless. For a long moment, she just stared, as if she hadn't heard him. 
Then, without a word, she punched a few buttons on the register. Pump one, Kyle added, glancing over at the single customer who hadn't moved an inch. He was seated in the booth nearest to the window, his head still bowed as if asleep. The old woman finally nodded and handed him a receipt. Her fingers were bony and pale, and her eyes spiked the something about them was wrong, cloudy, almost vacant. Kyle quickly paid and turned to leave, eager to get out of there. But just as he reached the door, he heard a voice, a whisper almost. You shouldn't stay. Kyle froze. He turned back to the woman, but she hadn't spoken. Her face was still as blank as before. He glanced around the diner, but no one else had moved. Excuse me, he asked. The old woman stared at him, unblinking. Don't linger. Get your gas and go. Her voice was cold, flat. Kyle felt a shiver run down his spine, but he forced a nod and left the diner. The rain had let up slightly, but the air felt heavier, thicker. He hurried back to his car and began pumping gas, glancing nervously toward the diner's windows. The man in the booth hadn't moved. His silhouette remained slumped over the table, unmoving. Kyle felt a growing sense of unease. He couldn't explain why, but something about this place felt wrong, like a dark weight pressing down on him. The gas pump clicked signaling that the tank was full. Kyle quickly replaced the nozzle and jumped into his car, ready to drive off. But just as he turned the key in the ignition, his headlights illuminated something in the distance, something standing at the far edge of the lot, just beyond the reach of the lights. A figure. It was hard to see through the rain and mist, but it looked like someone, a person, tall and gaunt, standing perfectly still, watching him. Kyle's heart raced. He squinted, trying to get a better look, but the figure didn't move. It just stood there, like a shadow in the fog. He threw the car into gear, ready to pull away, but something made him hesitate. He glanced back at the diner one last time, and that's when he saw it. The man in the booth wasn't alone anymore. Two more figures now sat at the booth, just as motionless, just as slumped over. Their backs to him, their heads bowed low, and between them, a fourth figure now stood at the window, staring directly at Kyle his breath caught in his throat. The figure was blurry through the rain, but there was no mistaking the pale face, the sunken eyes, eyes that seemed to bore into him, even from that distance. Panic gripped him. He slammed his foot on the gas, speeding out of the station, tires squealing against the wet asphalt. The road was dark and empty as he flew down the highway, his heart racing, his mind struggling to make sense of what he had just seen. But a few miles down the road, the car began to sputter. No, no, not now. Kyle muttered, glancing at the gas gauge. It was dropping fast, faster than it should have, as if something was draining the tank. The engine coughed and the car slowed to a crawl, and then it stopped. Kyle slammed the steering wheel, his heart pounding. He glanced out the window, but there was nothing but darkness on either side of the road. The rain had turned into a fine mist now, clinging to everything, muffling the world around him. He pulled out his phone, hoping to find some signal, but the screen was dead. He groaned and leaned back in his seat, trying to think. Maybe he could walk back to the gas station, find help. But then he saw it, in his rearview mirror. The same figure, standing in the road behind his car. Closer now. Much closer. Kyle's breath quickened. He blinked, his mind racing. How had it gotten here so fast? He'd driven for miles. He turned around, his eyes wide, but the road behind him was empty. No figure. No one. His heart pounded in his chest and his mind raced. He was sure he had seen someone. But now, a tapping sound suddenly echoed from the window. Kyle's head whipped around, and there, inches from the glass, was the same pale face, eyes wide and unblinking, staring directly at him. And it smiled. Story number seven. The headlights cut through the thick fog as Mason guided his car down the narrow, twisting road. He had been driving for hours, and the GPS had long since lost signal leaving him with nothing but vague directions from a stranger at the last rest stop. There's a gas station up ahead, the man had said. Just keep going. It'll pop up out of nowhere. Mason's fuel gauge was teetering on empty, and the last thing he wanted was to break down in the middle of nowhere. The woods on either side of the road were dense, their tall, skeletal trees looming like silent watchers. The mist clung to everything, muting the world as if it had swallowed the road itself. He hadn't seen another car for what felt like hours. Just as he was starting to lose hope, a dim light appeared in the distance, barely visible through the fog. Mason squinted, relieved to make out the flickering neon sign. Mel's gas station, open 
The place looked old, almost decrepit, but he had no choice. The needle on his gas gauge was deep into the red. He pulled into the station, the engine sputtering as it rolled to a stop beside the pump. The building was small, with one old pump under a rickety canopy. The gas station itself had a single door, its glass fogged and streaked with grime. A faded open sign hung crookedly in the window, its light blinking weakly. Mason stepped out into the cold, damp air. The silence was unnerving. The mist seemed to press in around him, swallowing up the sound of his footsteps. The only noise came from the soft buzz of the old fluorescent light above the door. He reached for the gas pump, but the nozzle was stuck. It didn't move no matter how hard he pulled. He cursed under his breath and headed toward the door of the station, determined to find someone inside to help. The bell above the door jingled loudly as he stepped in. The interior of the station was dimly lit, the air thick with the smell of stale cigarettes and something else, something sour and metallic. The shelves were half empty, stocked with dusty cans and faded packages of chips. Behind the counter sat an old man, hunched over, reading a newspaper that looked as though it had been there for years. Hey, Mason called out, his voice echoing in the emptiness. The old man didn't look up. His skin was pale, almost gray, and he was dressed in an old, stained uniform that might have once been blue. His name tag read Mel. Excuse me, Mason said louder this time, stepping closer to the counter. I need some gas, but the pump's stuck. Can you? Mel slowly lifted his head, his movements sluggish, almost mechanical. His eyes, dull and glazed, locked on onto Mason's with an unsettling intensity. You shouldn't be here, the old man rasped, his voice dry and cracked like he hadn't spoken in years. Not tonight. Mason frowned. What do you mean? I'm just trying to fill up and get back on the road. Mel's gaze drifted past Mason toward the door as if he were looking at something or someone just beyond the entrance. His hands trembled as he pointed a bony finger toward the back of the station. Get your gas and go, Mel whispered, almost pleading. Before it's too late. The hairs on the back of Mason's neck stood on end. Something about the man's tone sent a chill through him. He glanced toward the back of the station where a dusty door led to what looked like a storeroom. He was about to ask more questions, but the door jingled behind him. Mason turned, expecting to see another customer, but no one was there just the empty, fog-filled lot. The mist seemed thicker now, pressing against the windows, making it impossible to see anything beyond a few feet. He turned back to Mel, but the old man was already rising from his stool, shuffling slowly toward the back door. Leave, Mel said, his voice barely audible as he disappeared through the door. Before they come. Mason's heart raced. Before who comes? He wanted to leave, to run back to his car and forget this place ever existed. But something held him there, a morbid curiosity, a feeling that there was something more. Against his better judgment, Mason followed the old man to the back door. As he pushed it open, the smell hit him first, a foul stench like rotting meat. The storeroom was dim, lit only by a single hanging bulb that flickered ominously. The shelves were cluttered with old tools and rusted cans, but what caught his attention was the trap door in the floor, half covered by a dusty tarp. It was slightly ajar. Mason's pulse quickened. He shouldn't open it. Every instinct screamed at him to turn back, to get into his car and drive, but he couldn't. Something about that trapdoor called to him. He knelt down and slowly lifted the heavy wooden door, the hinges creaking in protest. A wave of damp, cold air hit him, and below, in the darkness, he could see stairs leading down into a black void. A faint sound drifted up from below, a shuffling, dragging noise, like something moving slowly, clumsily in the dark. Mason stood frozen, his heart thudding in his chest. He wanted to move, to close the door and leave, but before he could react, the shuffling sound grew louder. Footsteps. And then, from the depths of the darkness, a low, guttural whisper echoed up the stairs. Help us. Mason staggered back, his breath catching in his throat. His eyes widened as he saw them figures. Dozens of them, pale and gaunt, emerging from the shadows at the bottom of the stairs. Their faces were twisted, their eyes sunken and lifeless. They dragged themselves upward, their hands reaching for him, their mouths moving in silent pleas. Help us. Mason slammed the trapdoor shut, his heart pounding wildly. He stumbled backward, gasping for breath, but then a shadow passed over him. He looked up to see Mel standing there, his face twisted into something far more monstrous than before, his eyes dark and hollow. You should have listened, 
Mel rasped, his voice no longer weak, but deep and otherworldly. Now you'll never leave. The last thing Mason saw was the trapdoor swinging open once again. Story number eight. The gas station stood alone on the edge of town, the last stop for miles. A relic from another era, its neon sign buzzed weakly, casting a faint glow over the cracked pavement. Jacob had been working the night shift there for the past few weeks, the hours dragging on in quiet isolation. It was a dead-end job, but it paid the bills. Most nights, no one even stopped by. It was a night like any other, cold, dark, and uneventful. The clock on the wall read 1.23 a.m. Jacob yawned, leaning back in his chair behind the counter, staring at the flickering screen of the security monitor. Outside, the wind howled, rattling the windows. The highway beyond the station was empty, stretching out into the black void. As he sipped his lukewarm coffee, the bell over the door jingled. Startled, Jacob looked up. A man had entered, his clothes soaked from the rain that had started earlier. He wore an old leather jacket, hood pulled low over his face, obscuring his features. Late night for a drive, Jacob said, forcing a smile. The man didn't respond, walking past the counter toward the snack aisle. His movements were slow, almost deliberate, like he was searching for something. Unease crept into Jacob's chest. There was something strange about this guy, something that made his skin crawl. Trying to shake it off, Jacob focused on the security monitor. The man's tall, shadowy figure loomed on the grainy screen, wandering aimlessly between the shelves. He hadn't picked anything up yet, and he'd been in there for too long. After several minutes, the man finally approached the counter. His hood still obscured most of his face, but Jacob caught a glimpse of his eyes. Dark, unblinking, almost empty. Just gas, the man muttered, his voice low and raspy. He slid a crumpled bill across the counter. Jacob glanced at the screen, noticing the man's car parked outside, idling in the rain. It was an old sedan, beaten up and rusting at the edges. He couldn't remember hearing it pull in. Jacob nodded, handing the man his change. Pump three, he said, trying to sound casual. The man didn't respond. He turned and left, the bell jingling once more as he stepped into the night. Jacob watched him through the window, standing by the pump, staring blankly at the numbers as they ticked up. Something about him was deeply unsettling, but Jacob couldn't pinpoint why. It wasn't the first time he'd had odd customers in the middle of the night. Drifters, hitchhikers, they all passed through at some point. But this guy felt different. The man finished pumping his gas and got back into his car. Jacob expected him to drive off, but instead, the car remained where it was, headlights illuminating the station's cracked asphalt. Seconds turned into minutes. The car didn't move. Jacob's pulse quickened. He glanced back at the security monitor. The car was still there, sitting in the rain. He could see the shadowy figure inside, motionless behind the wheel. What the hell is he doing? Jacob muttered to himself. After a few more minutes, Jacob's patience ran out. Grabbing his jacket, he stepped out into the cold night, the rain immediately soaking through his clothes. He approached the car cautiously, his breath visible in the damp air. He knocked on the driver's side window. Hey, you okay in there? No response. The figure inside remained still, head down, hands on the wheel. Sir? Jacob knocked again, harder this time. You need to move along. Suddenly, the car engine revved, roaring to life. Jacob stumbled back, startled, as the sedan peeled out of the lot, tires screeching against the wet pavement. It shot down the highway, disappearing into the darkness. Jacob stood there, heart racing, dad watching the taillights fade into the night. He turned to head back inside, shaking off the encounter. As he approached the station's door, something caught his eye. There, in the middle of the lot, was a single piece of paper flapping in the wind. Frowning, Jacob picked it up. It was a torn photograph, old and weathered. His breath caught in his throat as he stared at it. It was a picture of him, younger, maybe ten years ago, standing outside his old apartment with his friends. How could this man have something like this? He flipped the photo over. Scrawled in messy, uneven handwriting were the words, See you soon. A chill ran down Jacob's spine. He scanned the empty highway, but the man's car was long gone. His fingers tightened around the photo, crumpling it. He rushed back into the station, locking the door bar behind him, his heart pounding in his chest. Who was that guy? How did he have that photo? Jacob tried to calm his racing thoughts, but the unease gnawed at him. Something wasn't right. He glanced back at the security monitor, hoping to distract himself with the quiet stillness of the station. 
but what he saw made his blood run cold. The car hadn't left. It was back. There, on the edge of the screen, the sedan sat once more, headlights off, just beyond the reach of the station's neon glow. The figure was still inside, watching, waiting. Jacob's hands trembled as he backed away from the counter. He grabbed the phone and dialed 911, but the line was dead, just static on the other end. His heart raced, panic setting in. He looked back at the monitor. The car door had opened. The man was getting out, slowly stepping into the rain, his face still obscured. Jacob rushed to the back of the station, grabbing the keys to the storage room. He locked himself inside, his breath coming in shallow, panicked gasps. Outside, he heard the faint jingle of the bell as the man entered the station. Footsteps echoed on the tile floor, slow and deliberate. Jacob pressed his ear against the door, heart pounding in his chest. The footsteps grew louder, closer, and then they stopped. Silence. Jacob held his breath, straining to hear anything, any movement, any sign of where the man might be. The silence stretched on, thick and suffocating. Suddenly, there was a loud knock on the storage room door. Jacob's blood ran cold as a voice, low and raspy, whispered through the crack in the door. See you soon. Story number nine. The sun had long set, leaving the empty highway bathed in darkness. Kate had been driving for hours, the glow from her dashboard barely lighting up her tired face. The GPS had stopped working miles ago, and she was beginning to wonder if she had made a wrong turn somewhere. Her gas tank was nearing empty, and panic started to bubble up in her chest. Just as she began to contemplate pulling over and waiting for daylight, a faint, blinking light appeared in the distance. A gas station. Relief washed over her. She steered the car toward the flickering sign, pulling into the small, isolated station. It was the kind of place that looked like it hadn't been touched in decades. The paint on the building was peeling, and the pumps were old, mechanical relics. There was no sign of any other customers, just the quiet hum of the fluorescent lights above the station. She parked by one of the pumps and sat for a moment, staring at the empty road. Something about this place felt wrong. But she didn't have much choice. She needed gas, and she needed it now. Stepping out of the car, Kate shivered as the cold night air bit at her skin. She tried to ignore the uneasy feeling gnawing at her as she grabbed the pump and began to fill her tank. As the numbers slowly climbed, her eyes wandered to the small convenience store attached to the station. The windows were dark, but she could just make out the faint outline of a figure inside. Great, she muttered to herself. At least someone's here. The pump clicked off, signaling her tank was full. Kate headed toward the store to pay, but before she reached the door, it swung open, and a man stepped out. He was tall, with a scruffy beard and a weathered baseball cap pulled low over his eyes. His clothes were old, stained like he'd been working on cars all day. Evening, the man said, his voice gravely. He smiled, but it didn't reach his eyes. Need anything else? Kate shook her head, pulling out a few bills from her pocket. Just paying for gas. The man took the money without a word, his eyes lingering on her longer than she liked. She shifted uncomfortably, glancing back at her car, ready to leave as quickly as possible. Not many folks come through here at night, he said, breaking the silence. Road's pretty empty this time of year. Kate forced a smile. Yeah, I noticed. The man chuckled, a low, hollow sound. You be careful out there. Strange things happen on this road at night. Her forced smile faltered. What do you mean? The man's expression darkened, his smile fading. You ever heard of the disappearances? Kate's stomach twisted. No, I haven't. People vanish. No trace. Cars left abandoned, keys in the ignition, but no driver. Some say it's the highway. Others say it's the night itself that takes them. She felt her pulse quicken. Are you serious? The man shrugged, his eyes glinting in the dim light. Just a word of advice. Don't stop for anyone. Not tonight. A chill ran down her spine. She quickly muttered a thanks and turned toward her car, her footsteps quickening as she reached the driver's side door. She got in, locked the doors, and started the engine. As she pulled out of the station, she glanced in the rearview mirror. The man was still standing outside, with watching her drive away, his figure gradually swallowed by the darkness. Kate tried to shake off the conversation as she drove, the highway stretching out in front of her like an endless ribbon of black. She turned on the radio to drown out the eerie silence, but all she could find was static. The road was empty, just as the man had said. No other cars, no lights in the distance, 
just her and the night. Minutes passed, and soon she started to feel a little foolish for letting his words get to her. But then, out of the corner of her eye, she saw something. Up ahead, barely visible in the dim glow of her headlights, was a figure standing on the side of the road. A woman, drenched from the rain, her hand raised, signaling for a ride. Kate's heart skipped a beat. She slowed the car, her mind racing. The man's warning echoed in her head, don't stop for anyone. But what if she was hurt? What if she was stranded, just like Kate had been? The woman stepped closer as Kate neared, her face pale, almost ghostly in the headlights. Kate's hands trembled on the wheel. The woman's eyes locked with hers, desperate, pleading. Kate's foot hovered over the brake. She couldn't just leave her there, could she? But something wasn't right. The woman's face, there was something wrong with it. Her expression was blank, almost lifeless. And then Kate noticed. Her feet, they weren't touching the ground. A scream tore from Kate's throat as she slammed her foot on the gas, speeding past the figure. Her heart raced as she glanced in the rearview mirror. The woman was gone. Kate's pulse pounded in her ears as she drove faster, the road blurring around her. She didn't dare slow down, didn't dare look back again. After what felt like hours, a light appeared in the distance, a rest stop, brightly lit and bustling with people. Relief flooded her as she pulled in, her hands shaking as she parked the car. She stumbled out, gasping for breath. Leaning against the car, she glanced back toward the highway. It stretched out into the darkness, just as empty as before. But there, in the distance, she saw it. The faint outline of a figure standing by the side of the road, watching. Story number 10. The wind howled as Jenna drove down the desolate highway, her hands gripping the steering wheel tightly. It was late, far later than she had planned to be out, and the road was flanked by nothing but endless stretches of dark woods. The occasional gust of wind made the trees sway and creak, and the sound made her uneasy. She hadn't passed a single car in the last hour, and her phone had no signal. The gas gauge blinked low, and Jenna cursed under her breath. She knew she should have filled up back in town, but the idea of stopping had seemed worse at the time. Now she had no choice. Up ahead, a dim light flickered in the distance. She squinted through the darkness and fog, spotting a gas station sign barely illuminated by an old flickering neon light. Relief washed over her. The sign read, Clancy's Gas Station. Last stop for 100 miles. As she pulled into the station, it struck her just how old the place looked. Uh, the paint was peeling from the small building, the pumps looked like, like they hadn't been upgraded since the 1960s, and the whole lot was covered in a thin layer of grime. The only light came from a single bulb hanging above the entrance to the convenience store, casting long, eerie shadows over the lot. Jenna stepped out of her car and was immediately hit by the cold, biting wind. She zipped up her jacket and headed for the pump, trying to ignore the unnerving stillness around her. The wind had died down, and now the only sound was the creaking of the rusty sign hanging overhead. She slid her card into the pump, but it beeped with a loud error sound. A message appeared on the small, cracked screen. Pay inside. Great. Jenna glanced at the building again. The windows were dark, and the inside looked even more decrepit than the outside. She hesitated, but knew she didn't have a choice. The fuel gauge was on empty, and there were no other options. The bell above the door jingled as she stepped inside. The smell hit her immediately, musty, like damp wood and old cigarettes. The store was dimly lit with only a few flickering fluorescent lights overhead. The shelves were sparsely stocked with dusty bags of chips, outdated candy, and grimy bottles of soda. Behind the counter, a man stood, watching her. He was older, with greasy gray hair and pale skin that looked almost translucent under the dim lights. His eyes were sharp, though, too sharp for someone who looked so frail. He smiled, but it was an unsettling kind of smile. Too wide, too forced. Evening, the man said, his voice raspy. You need some gas? Yeah, Jenna replied, trying to keep her tone light. Pump's not working, says to pay inside. The man nodded slowly, his eyes not leaving hers for a second. Pump's been finicky lately, not many folks come through here anymore. Jenna handed him her card, and the man swiped it through an old, worn-down register. She couldn't help but notice how his fingers lingered on the card a little longer than necessary. Long drive ahead? He asked, sliding the card back toward her. Just passing through, Jenna said, forcing a smile. The man nodded again, his gaze still unnervingly intense. 
Best to get out of here soon. This place, it gets lonely at night. Jenna swallowed and nodded, not wanting to stay any longer than necessary. She took her receipt and hurried back outside, breathing a sigh of relief once she was back in the open air. The pump worked this time, and as the gas flowed, she glanced around the lot. Something felt wrong. It wasn't just the eerie quiet or the isolation. It was as if the air itself was heavy, pressing down on her. She looked back toward the convenience store and saw the man still standing at the counter watching her through the grimy window. Her skin prickled. The gas pump clicked, signaling that her tank was full. Jenna wasted no time, hopping back into her car and slamming the door shut. She turned the key in the ignition, but as the engine roared to life, something caught her eye in the rearview mirror. A figure. It stood at the edge of the woods, just beyond the reach of the gas station's light. At first, she thought it was her imagination, the fog and shadows playing tricks on her. But no, there was definitely someone there. The figure didn't move, just stood perfectly still, watching. Jenna's heart raced. She turned to get a better look, but the figure was gone. She blinked, her pulse thudding in her ears. She had to get out of here. Throwing the car into drive, Jenna sped out of the lot, the tires kicking up gravel as she peeled back onto the highway. The fog was thicker now, swirling around the car, making it harder to see more than a few feet ahead. But then, up ahead, she saw it again. The figure, standing in the middle of the road, directly in her path. Jenna slammed on the brakes, her car skidding to a stop just inches from the figure. Her heart pounded in her chest as she stared out into the fog, but the figure was gone again. Vanished. She took a shaky breath, her hands trembling on the wheel. She had to keep going. She couldn't stop now. As she pressed down on the gas, the car sputtered, then died completely. The headlights flickered out, leaving her in total darkness. No, 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 Jenna muttered, trying to restart the engine, but it was no use. The car wouldn't start. Then, out of the silence, she heard it. A soft tapping sound on the window. Tap, tap, tap. Jenna's breath caught in her throat. Slowly, she turned her head toward the passenger window. There, staring back at her through the glass, was the figure. Its face was pale and gaunt, its eyes hollow and black like two empty voids, and it was smiling, a twisted, inhuman smile that stretched unnaturally wide. The tapping grew louder. Tap, tap, tap. The glass began to crack. 